Hey guys, City here. Today we're going to be coming at you with a design using the AETN. This building right here, the AETN, is a building you guys may encounter in the ice biomes. Of course, if you guys don't know what this building does, this building radiates cold energy as long as you feed it in hydrogen. Now, of course, this building is going to be a building you cannot make yourself. You could only find in the wild. And of course, this building will not consume any power as long as you feed it hydrogen the building operates this is very nice as this building could become a cold source for you guys and the caveat with this though is that it does not cool down very fast and the only way to control the temperature is going to be using a shutoff as long as you have a shutoff you could kind of tie in the shutoff and if you allow hydrogen in or not via automation and otherwise you can't really control how cold this goes if you don't have a shutoff the other thing i would imagine is having a door automation right underneath so that if it gets cold enough you open the door and that prevents the building from operating but of course the shutoff method also works and we have our shutoff here controlling the temperature onto a thermal sensor once it's too cold we do not allow any more hydrogen in and that basically shuts off the building now as I said before, this building also, although it chills to a temperature of minus 173.2, it doesn't do it at a fast rate. It's it's somewhat slow, and because of that, there's not a lot of uses for this. The Aqua Tuner is going to chill much faster, although this does have more power than a Wheeze Wart. I would still say that it's a lot weaker than an Aqua Tuner. In today's design, we're going to be converting this building into an ice machine. And that's going to be today's video, the AETN Ice Machine Design. Of course, this is only if you need ice, and of course, ice is really good. You could use that to make ice temp shift plates, do spot cooling. Sometimes you might want to make ice statues if that's what you guys want to do. Building the ice statues inside the base is another method of cooling down the internal temperatures of the rooms, as long as you have a way to deal with the water. So whatever it may be, the reasons why you need the ice, this is going to be today's setup. Now to get it started, the shutoff setup with the pipelines, we feed in hydrogen into the inside and we allow the AETN to chill the hydrogen element the hydrogen element is going to be the only content in here we use a high pressure gas vent so that we have more of the gas that means that we get to allow to hold more cold thermal energy so that it's much faster to freeze the ice I would recommend using hydrogen like this as this is going to be the best gas you have the gas that has better stats in this is actually steam but steam does not really allow for you to go to a negative temperature. So because of that, hydrogen is going to be your best bet. Now, of course, the next thing we're going to have to talk about is more automation. So we have a thermal sensor here attached to the shutoff. This thermal sensor is set to above minus 25, and that's because of my crude oil lock. If my dupes ever want to go in and out, I just wanted to make sure that it's not cold enough to immediately freeze the liquid lock, although we do have our vacuum door set up to prevent any of the thermal energy from leaking. Now, past that, we have more automation on the right side. The same thermal sensor goes into a NOT gate into an AND gate. This is set so that if it's cold enough, we will allow water in as long as we turn on the signal. And if it's not cold enough, we will release hydrogen in, but we're going to stop the water from flowing in. This allows the box to maintain temperature easier and so that the water always flashes in to ice and doesn't have to wait anywhere. This is because we want to prevent the ice from becoming a solid block like this that requires us to mine it out. Because if it solidifies into a solid block and we have to dig it, we will lose half of the mass. By freezing it and having it become tiles like this, we don't lose any of the mass, and because of that, it means we get more ice. Now, of course, that's the simple automation into the shutoff, as we're using both the thermal sensor and the signal switch to control if we allow water in or not. The next thing we're going to go over is going to be the pipelines. What we created right here is a pipeline loop. We have the water going into the shutoff, the shutoff feeds into the valve, and the valve releases a little bit of water with the rest overflowing to the bottom. This is because the valve is set to 500 grams, and by doing so, that means we're dripping out 500 gram bubbles onto the diamond tile so that it immediately flashes into ice. Without the overflow, you will actually have the remainder of the 
9.5 kilograms of water here waiting because of the fact that if you don't have an overflow, the water just sits on the tile. And that means that the automation is not going to be as effective. I wanted to make it overflow so that we only release water when it's allowed and when it's not allowed, we're, we don't have a bubble just slowly still leaking out water. It just exits out the other way. Now, of course, this is a simple setup. Pipeline goes into the intake from the output pipe goes into the intake with an overflow going down. This is a separate pipeline coming from the output pipeline going to the vents. And then we need the bridges here so that we could deal with the uh, bridge coming in here so that we have to loop on priority. We only allow water in if we have space for more water. Otherwise, this water pipeline at the bottom is yielding to the loop. Next thing we have inside is gonna be the shipping items. As you can see, we have an auto sweeper here and a loader. That's because we're going to not allow any of the dupes to go inside anymore. And so we need a way to be able to grab the ice. We set up a one drop lock in a vacuum right here with two diamond tiles touching the cold thermal energy, meaning that as soon as the ice solidifies, we sweep it, goes up top, and we maintain the cold by having that sit on a cold tile. Now, of course, this is also in a vacuum. There is not going to be any heat loss, which means that my crude oil right here does it not actually solidify. That's because it's actually not touching anything. It's between two insulated tiles and because there's no gas here, this crude oil is not actually chilling. It's actually just going to maintain the temperature and stay around that as long as it can. Of course, this means that my dupes could just walk up, grab the ice anytime they need it, and this is never going to melt. Now, of course, let's get this started. Let's show you guys how this build works in action. So, of course, that's why this signal switch is here. Kick it on. That allows this to start releasing water, and you'll see how it works. The excess 9.5 loops at the bottom, which means that we're having only 500 grams run inside into the pipeline, and then we're going to drip 500 gram bubbles. That splashes, immediately becomes ice, and we sweep that out. We'll run this on 3x speed. You can see that we're running. Now, of course, this means that we're adding in 30 degrees. In our case, it's around 25 degrees water. This means that eventually it's going to heat up. And once it heats up too much, the setup here that we have set to minus 25, it's going to shut this off, not allow any more water to come in and allow this to kick back on once again. And this is on, this is off. You can see that no more water is coming in and the AETN is running. This is going to be chilling the environment. Now it's above it. There's a little bit of extra hydrogen. This could be running while we drip the water and that's perfectly fine. As you can see, controlled setup. But guys, that has been the AETN Ice Machine. If you guys have any questions about this build, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.